Hello, everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R, Part 21, Descriptive Statistics. Now, in the last few lessons, we learned how to do plotting in R to help with exploratory analysis. But another thing you can do is simply create statistics that sum up different aspects of the variables that you have in your data sets. So in this lesson, we're going to just go through what some of those are and how to calculate them using R. So we'll start by looking at measures of center, which are statistics that give you some sense of the usual value or typical value you might see within the distribution of a variable. We'll start by loading in the empty car data set and by looking at our first measure of center, which is the mean, or the average. So to get the mean of something in R, you just use the mean function, and the mean is simply the arithmetic average, so it's adding up all the values and then dividing by how many there are. Now you can also get means of all the columns in a data frame using the call means function, so we'll just run that. And those are the averages for each column. You can do the same thing for rows with row means. So those are quick ways of getting averages across an entire data frame. Now an alternative to the mean is the median of the distribution. And to get that, you just use the median function. And the median differs from the mean in that it's the value that separates the data into basically two halves. It's the 50th percentile. So half the observations fall below the median and half are above the median. Now there isn't a built-in column medians function to my knowledge, but you can easily do that yourself using the apply function. So all you need to do is apply to the cars data set or whatever data set you're doing across the second margin, which is the columns, and just pass in the median as the function. So that will essentially get you the column median. So we'll do that. So the mean and median both give you some sense of the center or middle point of a distribution in general, but they're not always the same due to the way they're calculated. And we'll just make some plots looking into why that is. So we'll start by just creating a density plot of normally distributed data and showing the mean and median on that. With a normally distributed data set, the mean and median are in this exact same spot. The data is symmetric, and there aren't any big outliers that would pull the average in any given direction, and so the mean and median end up overlapping. But if you have data sets that are unbalanced in some way or have big outliers, those can end up pulling the mean or average in the direction of that skew or outlier, while the median tends to not be pulled up so much by such things. So the median is considered a robust statistic because it tends to resist those sorts of influences, but we'll create another plot to investigate that. So we're gonna create some skewed data this time, and then we'll plot the mean and median. And we can see in, in the skewed data set that's pretty heavily skewed to the right here, the the mean, this black bar, is quite a bit further to the right than the median because these extreme values are pulling the mean up, but the median isn't pulled up quite so much by that. Another measure of common values in a distribution or variable is the mode. What the mode is is just the most common value that occurs regardless of where it occurs. There isn't a built-in function in R to find the mode, but you can actually do it without too much difficulty by creating a table of the data, finding the max of that table, so that's basically finding whatever had the max count, and then using that as an index into the names of the table. So that's what we're doing here. We're, we're creating some data, we're making a table from it, we're getting the max of the table with which.max, and then we're passing that in as the index to the names, and that will get us the mode or most common value. So you can see here in the table, hat has three entries, so that would be the mode because it's the most common thing, and the we did spit out hat, so that is the proper mode. Now you could write a define a new function and store it to 
run the mode when you need to. So this is just an example of a mode function that you could write. So if we run that, it gives us the same answer. So now we'll move on to measures of spread or dispersion in the data set. That gives you a sense basically of how spread out data points tend to be from the typical values. So one of the simplest measures of spread is simply the range of the data, which is the distance or difference between the max value and the min value. So to do that, all you have to do is find the max of the variable minus the min of the variable. So we'll do that with the MPG column. Now we noted earlier that the median is essentially the 50th percentile of a data set, but you can find other percentiles, any arbitrary percentile you want to using the quantile function. So when you run quantile by default, it just shows you the, the min, which is the zero percentile, the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th, and the max, which is the 100th percentile. But you can pass in arbitrary arguments to find, say, the 10th percentile or the 15th or whatever you want to. So I'll show how to do that. But first, we'll just check the five num and summary functions, because these are essentially quick ways of extracting common quantiles that people like to check. Five num just gets the five number summary, which shows the minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. It's essentially the exact same thing that the summary function actually shows you for numerics, except the summary function also throws in the mean into that as well. Now back to the quantile function, if you want to get specific quantiles, you use quantile, you pass in the variable you want, comma, and then you have a probs argument that you set equal to a vector of all the different percentiles you want to. So in this case, we're passing in 10% and 90%, and that will get us the 10th and 90th percentiles. Interquartile range, or IQR, is another measure of spread. What the IQR is, is the range between the middle 50% of the data, which means between the 25th and 75th percentiles. To get the IQR in R, you just use this capital IQR function. Now we learned in the plotting lessons that box plots actually show a visual representation of the interquartile range. So we're just going to make a box plot with some labels here showing visually what that is. The bars at the top and bottom are the extreme values. It's not necessarily the minimum and maximum actually for a box plot like it says here. There are extreme values where sometimes outliers will lie beyond those in a box plot, but you can think of them as extremes that few values will be beyond. But then the middle box goes from the first quartile to the third quartile, and that area or distance between these is the IQR or interquartile range, and then the median is the 50th percentile. So variance and standard deviation are two other common measures of spread. What the variance is, is the average squared deviation or difference from the mean. So that might sound a little complicated, but basically what it is, is you find the mean, whatever the average is, and then for every single other value or record in the data set, you calculate how far is that from that mean and then you just square that amount, you average all those out, and that gives you what the variance is. So in R, to get the variance, you use the var function, and the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. What the standard deviation does is it puts the units back into those used by the variable in question, because in this case, with the variance, 36.2 mpg squared, like, that's kind of a weird unit to be working with, but if you do the square root, it puts it back into pure MPG terms. So that can be somewhat more intuitive to work with. So the standard deviation function in R is just SD. So we'll run that to get the standard deviation. And we can see the standard deviation is about six miles per gallon. Now, since variance and standard deviation are both derived from the mean, they both have some susceptibility to skewness and outliers like we saw with the mean earlier. So if that's a big concern, you can use the 
median absolute deviation as an alternative measure of spread, and that's based on the median, which inherits some of the median's robustness against the influence of skew and outliers. So how median absolute deviation works is instead of finding the mean and then calculating the average differences from the mean, you find the median, and then you find the median absolute differences from the median. That makes it more resistant to the effect of skew and outliers. To do the median absolute deviation in R, you just use this MAD function. Now there are a couple other measures of distributions that you might encounter at one time or another called skewness and kurtosis. We're not going to go into the mathematical details of what these are right now, but we will talk about them from a conceptual point of view and make some plots so you have an idea of what they mean. Essentially, skewness measures the amount of skew or asymmetry in a distribution, while kurtosis is kind of a measure of the peakedness or pointedness of a distribution. So we're just going to generate a few different distributions and then see what the skewness and kurtosis of them are. So we'll make some normally, normal data, some skew data, some uniform data, and some data that has some peaks in it to see if that generates a higher kurtosis number. So we'll run these and show what the plots look like. This is our normal data. So that should have low skewness because it's symmetrical. This is our skewed data. This is uniform data, so the values are all drawn evenly. It's symmetric, so that shouldn't show much skew either, or anything really. And this is a pretty peaked data set because it has a sharp peak instead of a more smooth peak. So that should show higher kurtosis, but since it's symmetric, it's not skewed, so it shouldn't show very much skew. So first we'll run skewness in all these. To check skewness in R, you just use the skewness function. So we'll run that. So we can see the normal data had about zero skew. It is some randomness in there, so that's probably why it's not exactly zero. The skew data had almost one for the, for the skew rating, so that's pretty high. And the uniform data and, and peaked data both had what amounts to zero for skew, which would make sense because those were both symmetric. So I'll run the same thing with kurtosis. The function for calculating that is just kurtosis in base R. So we'll run this. So the kurtosis of the normally distributed data is close to zero. For the skewed data, it was actually quite high because that exhibited kind of a sharp peak similar to the last data set. So that was 1.7. The uniform data actually has a kurtosis less than zero. I guess since it's completely flat, that's like the opposite of being peaked. And then the data with the sharp peak was three. So that's quite a bit more than anything else. So this covers most of the basic descriptive statistics you'll probably be using most of the time but there's a lot of other statistics you can do with data. So in the next lesson, we're going to lay the groundwork for looking at some more complicated statistical techniques by learning about probability distributions and how to work with them in R. See you again next time.